I recently won an award that came with loads of art supplies. I've not really had a chance to talk about it much yet, but last year I won the Association of Animal Artists Chairman's Award. The award was sponsored by a few different art companies, including St Cuthbert's Mill Paper, Rosemary Brushes and Derwent. I've been so busy lately that I haven't had the chance to try out any of my new supplies until now. I ended up getting the full 72 pastel pencil sets from Derwent, and it's been so long since I did a proper pastel painting, I thought I'd give them a try. I've decided on a lion, as I've never actually done a proper lion in pastel before. So this was something new for me. You might actually recognise the lion I'm drawing, as I've used this as a reference before for one of my large charcoal drawings. The reference photo itself is a combination of some photos from one of my colleagues, who's an avid photographer, and a little bit of photoshopping on my part. I'll put a link to his Instagram page in the description so that you can check it out, but just remember if you are using other people's photos for your work to ask for permission to use them first. It's been so long since I've done any pastel work that I actually forgot how to use them properly. And the first hour or so of this piece was me just fighting with the medium and trying to get it to work like I wanted it to. Eventually though, I got the hang of it again and started to gain a little bit of momentum with the piece. It's strange when I work with pastels, especially pastel pencils, because I very much see the process as drawing. Whereas with the other dry mediums that I use, charcoal, I see that more like painting. I know a lot of pastel artists out there would compare their technique more to painting, and you can actually see that in their work, because they're quite expressive with the mark making, and it gives the pastels a little bit more of a painterly feel. I am by no means a pastel expert. It's actually one of the mediums that I've spent the least time on, but the skills that I've picked up from painting and using charcoal are 100% transferable. Well, not 100%, like 80% transferable. It's the application of the medium that changes. So as well as trying a new lion, I'm also trying out some new paper. Most of the pastel work that I've done previously has been on pastel mats, but Amber bought me some UART paper for Christmas that I thought I would try out. I'm using the UART 800, which I think is the fine grain version, and I've got no complaints with the paper. It works really, really well for my technique. The only real difference, as far as I can tell, between this UART and the pastel mat is the feel of the surface. The UART paper feels very much like a very fine sandpaper, whereas the pastel mat feels a little bit softer, a little bit more velvety. But in terms of how they work, I see no real difference. Both of them hold the pastels really well, and it's really good for working in layers like I do with my technique. The methods that I use for my pastel pieces are very similar to the way that I paint. I start by quickly blocking in some of the basic colours, usually starting with the darkest colours first, and then I will blend them together using my fingers, and that does two things. It blends them together, obviously, to create subtle transitions, but it also pushes the pastel into the paper, which brings back some of that grain so that I can work on top of it more easily. I like putting that base coat down first, rather than just going straight into the details, because it gives me a little bit of a more pastely surface, gives me a little bit more of a movable surface, that when I put my later layers on, they can blend into that first layer. And I just think being able to just taper off some of your edges and blend some of your strokes into that layer just helps achieve a little bit more realism with the work. 
Then I just start adding detail, going from my darker colours first and then moving on to my lighter colours. And it's pretty much the same way that I would paint in acrylics or in oils. I'm actually in the process of editing a full real-time tutorial of this piece, including the reference photo for my patrons. It should hopefully be ready in a few weeks from when this video was uploaded, so if you do have any questions about the colours I'm using, or the techniques that you can see, then my Patreon tutorial will hopefully have all of the answers to your questions. As I said, the way that I paint in pastels is very similar to the way that I paint in acrylics or oils, and the way that I draw and paint the fur in pastels is pretty much an identical process. I've actually got loads of videos on painting fur and painting a lion's mane specifically, and I'll put a link to those videos in the description below so that you can check those out and I talk a little bit more about my technique in those videos. One thing that I am trying to get better at in my work is my backgrounds. I'm trying to come up with compositions and pieces that incorporate the background a little bit more, rather than just doing basic portraits. So this is sort of like a step forward towards being able to do that. And I've put this lion on a little bit more of a grassy background, which is a little bit more out of focus and a little bit messier than what I want to be able to do in a year's time, let's say, but I think it's a step in the right direction. A piece like this, the background doesn't need to be as in focus as the subject. It can be a little bit more abstract, which is one of the things that I love doing with pastels, just creating these abstract little nice marks, these interesting marks, that when you step back, all come together to give the appearance of something semi-realistic. The impression of detail and these interesting abstract marks all coming together is, in my opinion, a little bit more important than with paints. Because with paints, you can glaze, you can do thin layers, you can do thick layers. Whereas with the pastels, you've just got this solid dry layer, this solid dry medium that, that really, other than the interesting marks you can make, there is no different techniques that you can use. So that mark making is significantly more important in the pastels than in the paintings. Considering I've not painted with pastels for about six months, I am really pleased with how this piece turned out. The only thing I need now is a name for him. If you've made it this far and enjoyed the video, please do give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more art videos like this. And I'll leave an example of one of those fur painting videos for you to check out if you want to. If you can't see it, it's in the link in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time.